Wild forage plant food, by definition, is veganic. That is, it's free from animal fertilizers, such as fish, blood or bone meal, which are used in most organic vegetable production. If the land where it is growing is not polluted, forage wild food is beyond organic, it's veganic. If you include veganic foods in your diet, whether you've grown it yourself or foraged it from the wild, then you aren't contributing to the destructive side effects of conventional agriculture. Nature provides food for all the animals on the planet. It should be a basic right to be able to eat plants free from toxins. It is of the utmost importance that corporations, businesses and governments stop destroying our ecosystems, stop cutting down our forests, stop polluting our rivers, oceans, soil and air, and start to clean up the mess that they have made. Woods, hedgerows and seashores are great places to find wild food and to connect with the landscape. Wild foods are by nature full of vitality and nutrition. Join us on our mission to keep ourselves and our amazing planet healthy and happy. Hello everyone and welcome to the Vegan Organic Network Foraging Guide. Really exciting to be with you here today and I'm joined by an amazing group of people as always who are going to share their love and their passion for the earth, for foraging and all things veganic. So before we get started and I introduce them all to you, it's it's the earth is waking up right now, isn't it? We're starting to see a bit of sunlight. If you're in the UK, we've had a lot of rain and cold again, but things are starting to come up. And this is a great time to get outside and explore, find out what you can start eating from your local environment. And there's a lot more than you would imagine. So I'm going to introduce you to our great team. First of all, you've got me, Juliet Bryant. I am a nutritional consultant. I love getting out into the earth, foraging, showing people what they can do with the foods that are all around them, how we can use food as our medicine. And I'm really passionate about connecting people back into the earth. And through that, remembering our place in this beautiful earth as part of it, not separate walking on it. So that's a little bit from me. Over now to Joe. Joe, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi everyone. Um, yeah, I I love permaculture and forest gardening, and that's uh, where the foraging comes in. So I make gardens that you can forage in, and I like making super salads. So. I think I hold the unofficial record now for the super salad with over 300 things in from the garden. Um, but at this time of year, it's between 50 and 100. So it's a bit less at this time of year. But still, there's something every day of the year, uh, everywhere. Not You don't need to have a special garden. So it's uh, a lovely thing to learn to do. Of course, it's vegan organic. <laughs> Joe, that's epic. 300 ingredients in a salad. That is incredible. It is. It is. It's pretty. It took about an hour and a half to to forage. Um, yeah, I yeah. bet that is that is phenomenal. And the fact that you know you can get fifty to a hundred now in March when things are only just coming up, it shows you just how many things are out there that we can mm. actually access as food. Now is a really good time. Lots of things are suddenly appearing in the last week or two. It's yeah. magical, isn't it? <laughs> Amazing. Thanks, Joe. OK, we've got Mark. Mark, do you want to introduce yourself? Oh, you're muted. Oh, there we go. Joyful evening, everyone. Yeah. So as you guys just said, yeah, it's beautiful to be um, the abundance that nature has right now. So, yeah, I love to um, share, offer forage walks around various counties in the UK and allow people to go back into connecting more deeply to the plants and the trees and the fungi. And what I share is to then allow you guys to start to forage yourself, obviously forage yourself. Um, 
obviously in a safe way but it's so beautiful right now um and i also offer um tea ceremonies meditations um from native plants and plants um teas that i harvest from um and uh sent to me from uh, abroad from independent families and so it's so beautiful um to be in this space with everyone thank you thanks mark and it is lovely your teas are beautiful and some of the some of the things that you make your teas from are unusual things that people wouldn't realize like mulberry leaves exactly yeah it's as much as i love um to be native uh, so-called native um from living uh, being on the land um it's great to have that exploration from other plants and uh, trees and yeah and i find asia so beautiful for that um but there's so much around the world um so it's really beautiful yeah all, all so many different ones around um and it's it's beautiful amazing thanks mark look forward to hearing your plant later and now over to john john do you want to introduce yourself Oh, you need to unmute. That's it. Hey, guys. Um, it's just an honor to be part of this uh, lineup and um, just to be promoting what we do, um, which is basically introducing wild food into our daily diet uh, and basically remembering what our ancestors and our four um, fathers have have um, eaten in the past basically and um yeah i've got a real passion for that and try and eat wild food pretty much every day if i can and um yeah i've um reversed some illnesses in my life and um thanks to this lifestyle of um, vegan organic with wild food um i've managed to achieve things that doctors um couldn't do and i'm really passionate about it and um, I'm intuitive and I, I'm also a foraging mentor. So I, I lead people and, uh, and teach people as well down in um, the area I live at the moment, which is Cornwall. So, yeah. And you've got an amazing uh, small holding, don't you? Well, I think it's quite a large holding. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm setting up a project down in Cornwall, um, just over four acres and creating forest garden um all with the uh, veganic principles and that's going to be a really um interesting place to uh, visit in the future um we've already planted over 80 fruit trees and there's edibles everywhere so it's very exciting yeah but early days amazing. yes amazing i can't wait to come and visit thank you you'll be welcome <laughs> So we are going to start our journey of exploration on wild foods that you can go out and forage at the moment. Now, one of the things that's really important to be aware of is when you're foraging, always check where you're foraging from. Always look at uh, if it's near fields and there's runoff from pesticides. Never dig up roots. Always double check and cross reference what you are foraging for so that you don't make any mistakes. Really, really important. Have a little book, an app on your phone, something so you can cross reference so you have that safety of knowing what you're getting. And people of the plants never taking too much and bring that there are animals and birds who want to use this for feeding themselves. Well. So we always have to have that respect and never take from the land. So with that in we are some of the some of our favorite ones. And as I said, there's lots that you can find out there. So we're just selecting a few that you can you can find at the moment. So we're gonna start with you, Mark. Mark, do you want to share your plants with us? Yes, yes, I love to so tonight i'd love to share with everyone um a plant that's very abundant and actually it's even been abundant over the winter time uh and it goes by the name of alexander's and i always look to see what plants are really more abundantly out and, and this predominantly grows by the coastline but it's come inland so much and like where i'm at the moment it's probably like i don't know 15 miles from the coastline and it's everywhere. It's a huge, huge green carpet. Um, just be a little bit careful. Um, 
harvesting. So this is how it is right now. This is a picture I took a couple of days ago. And so a lot of them um, are getting the beautiful yellow heads come up now. Um, and the more I'd sort of, I'd never eaten Alexander's. And because I've seen a lot of it, I was curious to really explore this more myself. So, um, so I've eaten the, in fact, the last couple of weeks and every day I've been eating the leaves. So you can eat the leaves in salads. And um, again, all look for young, fresh, vibrant looking ones because when you start to observe now, they start to start to get a little uh, tinge and brown tinges on them, um, which is you know, obviously, you know, you want to leave those alone. Um, but as I see it, when I ate a stem raw for the first time a couple of weeks ago, it actually tastes like celery. Or perhaps it should be said that celery tastes like Alexander's because how I'm seeing it is celery most likely is derived from Alexander's. Um, I always say to people, be with this family, be very careful as well. And with any plant, obviously, to, uh, when you're harvesting, um, to know 100% that it is Alexander's. Um, but you can every part you can make a use from. So you can eat every part. Um, so I intend to dig up... Um, I was saying about not digging up roots, but what I've actually observed with, with a lot of roots is I've actually sometimes dug the roots up and left a little bit and replanted and they've regrown again, they've regenerated. That's just something I, I experienced. Um, so, um, yeah, and also, um, yeah, so it's really, really beautiful. Um, so eating that celery is really, this, this whole um, stick, um, it's really, really yum. And so the seeds which come out, uh, summer to late um, early autumn and it's kind of like our equivalent of uh, pepper um, how I see it so it's got a real peppery really really strong taste so actually that, to me that's our equivalent and also um, it's so you can make that into a powder if you choose sometimes I just put it into food whole as they are again this is the thing of playing around and um, experimenting um, this is the beauty of uh, being in nature and playing around with nature um and also um so like the going back to the kind of yellow heads you could potentially use those when they and i intend to do that myself to um you might be able to like even steam them like a kind of like a like a broccoli i suppose kind of that type of head and um, that's what it sort of forms like um but it's very very good so i'm going to stick now because actually just remind me it's got it's very very hollow inside this is not the best one to see um can you see me <laughs> um and it's um yeah really really I, I would taste a bit now but i won't um so what was i going to say so yeah it's really really um to to steam steam all of it um all the different parts and it's very good for any kind of gas um griping um help, very helps with the digestion and just by tasting those seeds, you can see that kind of that peppery taste, which helps the digestion. And, and I think it sort of helped with it. To me, that would help with the liver as well. Um, so it's very, very useful for that whole digestive um, tract. So the invitation is for people to um, go out there and experience it. And obviously, I love to share that on forage walks with people. So you get to know and experience and get up close and 100% know um, being with this beautiful plant. Um, I think that's it for me, really. Um, yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you, Mark. It is a, a great plant. It's also um, good for toothache. Um, and, and it used to be used for scurvy to pre pre prevent scurvy. Does anyone mm. else have anything they want to share on this plant? Joe. Yeah, thanks, Mark. I, I think it's a really nice foraging plant, a really easy one to identify as well. And um, you can eat all of it. I don't know if you mentioned the root, but I think that's a really nice winter vegetable, um, particularly mm -hmm. nice and edible part of the plant. Um, yeah, and I also make green powder from it. So I dry the leaves and make a green powder, which is nice to add uh, to salt, a bit like celery salt. You know? yeah. I've heard, actually, I've heard that celery is like a really super medicinal plant really alkalizing um it it sounds like a wonder plant and i wondered if alexander's had the same properties because um, often they do have the families 
share similar medicinals, don't they? Yeah, um, with the when it comes to celery, it's very good to stimulate um, digestive your digestive juices, so it helps with the high, your stomach acid levels. So I would imagine this does the same because it's very good for digestion and things like that. So I'm sure that there is a definite link on that level. Yeah, just one more thing on that plant because um, I teach for, for, forest garden making and foraging things. S somebody actually planted some in their garden, thinking that was a good plant to have. Please don't put this in the forest garden <laughs> unless you've got a big piece of land because it's so abundant in the uh, everywhere really. And once it's in a garden, it spreads really quickly. So it's one of those plants that's good to to go out and find in your locality. And it is it's mostly around the coast here as well. John, did you want to add anything about that? Um, yeah, just the, from my experience, my favourite part of the Alexander is the young stems. Um, if you kind of cut the top, top the head off, and um, I guess you can steam the head as well, um, but it's like an asparagus substitute. It's really, um, becomes really soft and juicy, and it's, yeah, it's got that same sort of asparagus flavour. If you add a bit of lemon juice and olive oil, salt and pepper, it's really delicious. Mm, sounds good. You can also um, tempura batter the flower heads, which is nice. You can use like a gram flour and make a batter. Lovely. Well, thank you for sharing that with us, Mark. And thank you, everyone, for sharing your information on that, too. OK, over to you, John. Thanks. So, yeah, um, I've got, there's a little video. I don't know if we're going to show that first. Hey guys, this is John Dale. I'm checking in from Cornwall, UK. And today I'm going to talk about wild garlic, uh, also known as Ramsons. Um, this is it right in front of me here. It's these beautiful green succulent leaves. They have a, um, a real garlicky smell about them so they, they can't really be mistaken for anything else um, underneath you'll see the young ones coming up and when they uh, they go into bud like that there and then they'll form into a white flower and um, yeah it's quite exciting um, I really look forward to this time of year and um yeah look forward to talking to you more about it john are you going to tell us more about thank it thank you so yeah i'm talking about uh yes definitely so yeah we're talking about uh, wild garlic which i've got a piece here um let's see there um also known as ramsons and this is the um, the bud, which turns into a flower. Um, the, uh, the whole plant is edible, and you'd use it in the same pro uh, pro same way that you would use sort of onions or garlics or any sort of allium. Um, but my favourite way to use wild garlic, um, and I look forward to it all winter and actually all year when it's out of season, uh, is to make wild garlic pesto, which I've just made some today with that. Um, wild garlic that I harvested and it's so easy it's a raw food dish and basically I just use the leaves if the flowers are out then I use the flowers and um, basically just pop them in either a, a magi mix or a vitamix and um, add a bit of pinch of salt um, some lemon juice some olive oil and some cashews or um, or even sunflower seeds and i j and just blend that up into like paste and um yeah then you can have that with um either pasta or potatoes or just anywhere where you would where, where you would usually have pesto and you don't need to add the basil to it or the garlic because it's got the garlicky flavor and it's just absolutely delicious and as I find that when I, when I made it and put it into a jar, if I haven't eaten it all um, <laughs> off the bat, bat um, it actually starts to ferment and it forms like a pre, uh, 
probiotic as well, which is really good. And by having it raw, um, all the living enzymes and amino acids are there. Because um, most of the pestos that you buy these days are pasteurized. So, yeah, it's just a really, really good way to uh, get it in. Uh, the other way I like to uh, um, preserve uh, the wild garlic is to dehydrate it and then make uh, dehydrate the leaves and then basically um, crumble them down and mix them with like Himalayan salt or sea salt. You make like a garlicky salt and then you can use that throughout the year um, when the wild garlic is not in season. And also, uh, I just find that um, this time of year, like we've been eating a lot of stodgy foods through the winter just to kind of keep warm. And I find that the uh, wild garlic is a good way to start that detoxing process. So, yeah, I just really, really enjoy it. And I, yeah, I really encourage you guys to uh, go out there and find some for yourselves and, and experiment with it as well. Yeah, um, back to the team, and I'm sure you other guys would be able to add something to that as well. <laughs> Thank amazing, you. John. Thank you. Thanks for sharing that amazing plant. It's one of my favourite things at this time of year when you walk past and you can smell garlic and you're like, oh, where's the wild garlic? Where is it? Such an exciting thing. Does anyone want to share about wild garlic? Joe. Okay, um, thanks, John. Uh, I love it too. It's something. It's a real marker of this time of year. Um, yeah, I. I think in a. I like drying the leaves. I find them too strong to eat. I think I overdid it a few years. Well, when I first discovered it, um, but I like uh, eating the flowers, especially. That's the bit that I look forward to the most. But I dry the leaves and sprinkle those into um, uh, soups and and sauces. Um, but I know the roots are available to us all year round. So uh, when we have this particular allium, we can have access to uh, garlic uh, all through the year. I know I've I read an account that Victorian kitchens used to use it. Um, there's one thing uh, about uh, harvesting it that around here, uh, the young leaves do look very similar to something which um, is called Lords and Ladies. And... Um, and um, yeah, sometimes it's very easy to, to harvest them together. We had a veg bag once which had both in. Fortunately, fortunately we knew what it was. Um, but they had the, the, Lord, the, the lords and ladies put in stock. They look very similar at the beginning, and then they change into bigger, darker shapes. So that's so. I think it's really important to learn that one in your area if you've got it. Maybe you haven't got it there. Um, but the it's also nice to check by the smell. It's one of those sensory ones. Um, a great, a really great foraging one. Where you find it, usually there's lots of it. Um, and also, right, I think it's a really good one to have in the garden, in a shady corner somewhere. Thank you, Joe. Mark, do you want to share anything on it? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I think just one thing to add, because it normally predominantly will grow in... Um, damp areas of woodlands and um so and again a bit like the oaks once it's there you'll see a whole whole carpet of it and like you say the smell it's like oh it's so beautiful and my name is john i harvested some uh, yesterday i just made a little my first batch of pesto so it's all been like a little kid again with uh well garlics here um and yeah so kind of look at me you see like cultivated garlic so to me, so the wild garlic will have those like anti-bacterial uh, um, qualities as well. Um, you know, and I find when I'm eating it, you can feel it really, really cleansing. And actually, it's so strong. I, I, I feel kind of like joking. You don't really, it's so strong. I feel you don't need that much. Um, almost you need to kind of like water it down in some ways because eating it as it is, I find I don't need to eat much at all. And it's, I can really feel it um, working inside of me. Um, and I have that such a, um, a yummy breath as well. Um, so it's also um, like a, probably for boils as well. I think if you crush the leaf up and put it on some boils, it would uh, help with that. Um, so it's, it's, it's again, it's, it's a super, super it's really sort of a, a cleansing type. And um, potentially could help with any, any skin issues. But I, I would say because it, it's quite heating i'd say just be aware of that of how much you you put on so um it this is the thing and nature provides everything and um, it's and, um 
And as the guy said, well, go, you know, keep a batch, keep your pestos and whole batch for the rest of the year. Um, Cause it's, you know, it's only out for what, maybe a couple of months you might still yeah, get it for. So, um, so yeah, get out there and, and, and uh, enjoy. Amazing. Thank you, Mark. It is so interesting, isn't it? That a lot of the things that come up at this time of year are those spring cleansers. They're the things that detox your body. They're antiviral, they're antibacterial, they're supporting the liver and the kidney. They're doing this cleansing effect to get the sluggishness of the winter out to support us through the changing of the seasons. You know, all of the kind of um, the old pagan festivals like the equinoxes and the solstices, all of these times, actually they mark when our system gets a little bit weaker and we go through a natural detox. So a lot of people get coughs and colds around these kind of um, ancient market times. So having the things that are in your environment, like the wild garlic, like the Alexander, these things are all amazing to support that. Thank you guys for sharing the wild garlic. Uh, now on to Joe. Joe, do you want to share your lovely plants? Great. Okay, thanks. Well, um, I've got cleavers, which there's a little film to show in a second, but this is also a really, really good <laughs> spring detoxing plant. Um, Dan, can we have the film, please? And I'm going to explore cleavers with you, or Gallium aparine. This is an amazing plant, and it's one to look out for over the next month. Um, it seems a bit late this year actually, we're nearly at equinox and this plant really uh, will start growing really fast. Um, I think it's been quite cold. So it's very easy to identify, it's the one that we know is sticky weed uh, or goose grass, it's got lots of names and it gets really, really sticky. Um, so there's little whirls of leaves and it's got quite a square tube. Uh, so we can eat the young leaves, always eat the young leaves, and we can eat, carry on eating the young leaves through the year. It does get a bit rough and tough as it go, gets bigger and bigger, and it can climb a lot up to five foot. So um, I couldn't actually find any in my garden, so this is just by my back gate, but I noticed there's, this, there's lots of edible stuff out here. Um, so there's cleavers, very young, next to the nettles. Um, and this really is one of the best spring tonic plants. It's really good for blood and it's known to move lymph in our bodies, which is very unusual things for plants to be able to do. So it's known as a blood tonic. Uh, uh, it, it's related to coffee and it's, it makes the best substitute coffee I've ever tasted. And we do that with the seeds later on in the summer, maybe July, August. We take the seeds and roast them so they're dry and then we um, grind them and put them in a coffee maker. And it is, it really is delicious. It's a good one to know about if you like coffee and um, want to be a bit more reliant in having our own. Well, I had fun filming that because um, I had a bit of a gale force wind one day and pouring with rain another. Um, uh, yeah. Um, the only thing I think to add was about it being a dye plant. And I might be wrong, but I think it's related to madder. But apparently it dyes bones red or it makes a red dye. Um, so I think that's interesting too. But what an amazing plant. And the coffee really does taste great. So I really recommend uh, any coffee drinkers out there uh, to have a go. Amazing. Thank you, Joe, for sharing cleavers. It is such a great plant. My favourite way to have it is just infused in water. So you put some into water and leave it overnight. Lovely. And then you drink it and it's really good for coughs. Very, very good for the respiratory system. So it helps to get any mucus off the chest. So really, really good as that expectorant. Um, that's how I, I like to work with cleavers the best. Anyone else want to share anything on this lovely plant? Mark? Yeah, I, I, I oh, sorry. Oh, it's all right, yeah. Um, you know, I was just gonna say as well, I know, um, as Joe said, you can eat them raw. Um, 
and I was just checking with people because I, I find personally that um, even when they when they're super young, maybe not too bad, but I can find something and get a little bit in my throat. But it's all personal because some people can like you know bring it on more and more and more. Um, so it's just being aware. So this is the invitation is when people do it, tune in that plant for you as well. Um, but cleavers is you know as for uh, as Juliet said, a, a cold infusion just to infuse it for a few hours just takes long to absorb in and you think on a nice hot spring day oh it's beautiful to share and, and it's sharing with people so it's the thing of sharing all the time more now i see um so you can have a real you know good get together and and enjoy that um and you could use the um actually there's nothing i want to experiment this year as well is the seeds um is that you can toast them now i don't know if anyone's experienced that i, I intend to do that this year so I'm always looking to see what I'm doing more with seeds of plants and uh, and you think the abundance of of the seeds there. And actually, you know, you don't just use your hands to harvest them. You just walk along and get your fleece to pick them for you. Um, so, um, but you could use the, um, uh, the, you can make a poultice as well um, from those. I think you could use those for like um, blisters or like sunburn, which would be good to explore to see um, how that would be. And this is again, I always say it all the time it's like it's all it's all out there in nature so just tune into that you might see you might get a have a blister or sunburn well okay let's see if this cleavers can do that is is it is it for you um so um and yeah it's such a beautiful tea as well um and actually i found as well it grows a lot in allotment so, so for those of you who've got allotments i always say you know incorporate the so-called weeds in there and i steam them so when they get do get a bit older do get more stringy I mean, I find I just gently um, steam them, with them down, and eat them. And again, it's so I really feel it's so so beautiful to have in a meal. Amazing, thank you, Mark. Thanks for sharing. I think that chopping them up finely as they get older and putting them into salads and things, then you don't get that scratchiness so much. But you just have to chop them quite finely as they get a bit older. That's what I mm. kind of do. John, did you want to share on cleavers? Yeah. Yeah. Just, uh, um, yeah, from my experience also, just uh, I struggle with them raw just for that scratchiness. Um, but as a infusion, like a tea or even a cold infusion, like a sun tea. Um, yeah. And with nettles as well, I found that a good combination of cleavers and nettles and um, the young, the young leaves and yeah, just a real nice spring tonic. Um, you can uh, filter that and put it into a water bottle and have it cold throughout the day. And it's just a really nice way of getting um, extra nutrition in vitamins and minerals. Amazing. Thank you, John. Thank you, Joe, for bringing cleavers to us. We've had such a lovely selection. Now over to me. I'm going to talk about Detanda today. So um, can you play the video, please, Dan? is Ditanda. This one here. Got a large array of other stuff. There's nettles down, dandelions over there, some sorrel, some mugwort, loads of stuff coming up at the moment. But this is what we're looking at right now. Ditanda, also known as peppergrass. The leaves have a waxy coating on them. It's hard to tell a bit because of the rain, but you can see the waxiness. The, the rain just kind of slides off almost. So this grows mainly in coastal areas, but you can find it in lots of other areas. You can also buy a plant of it and grow it in your garden. Detanda grows from March, there's loads of it about, all the way through to October. And you get this beautiful thing you can add to salads, to cooking. But I'll tell you more about that in a second. So that is Ditanda. So this is one of my favorites and I've got some Ditanda here. One of the things I love so much about Ditanda is the season, is the fact that it grows for so long that you can forage it from March, sometimes February, all the way through to kind of October. And you can have such an abundant crop. Now, a lot of people say it's quite invasive. Um, it needs damp ground to grow, so it likes to have that dampness. So whether it's coastal or whether it's just damp inland, then um, that's where you're going to find it the most. 
it's a great garden crop, but it will just take over. So if you plant it in your garden, beware that it will spread. So if you've got it in a bed, know that it's going to go throughout that. However, what's amazing is that you then have such a rich amount of food for so long. Now, you can have this raw, you can cook with it. The leaves taste, the name is peppergrass. So the leaves taste like horseradish or wasabi. They've got such an amazing bite to them. So I love chopping them into salads. I love putting them into curries, using them in so many different things. Uh, when you boil them, this takes away some of the bitterness. But for me, that's part of its magic is that bitterness. And I think in our Western civilizations, we don't have bitter food enough. And bitter food is so important for our digestive system. So uh, working with bitter foods is key, especially at this time of year as the seasons change. Now, one of the things about Detanda when we look at its kind of herbal use, um, it's used in treatments of the liver and the kidney because it's got that cleansing fear, it's got that diuretic um, effect. So it's helping your body to clear out toxins, it's helping you flush it out. And anything with that strong flavor, anything with that really sharp peppery type flavor generally has the action of clearing out parasites, clearing out bad bacteria, supporting the digestive system. So you can kind of start to look in your natural environment and go, okay, so if this has got this strong flavor, this pungent flavor, like the wild garlic, like the detanda, then it's going to have this cleansing, clearing effect on the body. So I think it's good to kind of start thinking that way as opposed to just uh, what the plant does. Um, it's, it's nice to think in these wider terms um, so you can start to create your own uh, repertoire and understanding of plants a little bit more. So a great one to uh, get and plant in your garden. One of the things that I love to do when it comes to foraging is finding those plants in the wild that I love and growing them myself in my garden, either letting them just grow where they are or getting the plant, buying it um, online, getting some seeds so that I've got that always to hand. And I know the conditions that it's in, there's not dog pee or anything like that. And there's no pesticides around. So I know that it's clean and I can access it whenever I want at my back door so I can go and grab it to make lovely food from. Uh, Detanda, you can also make a pesto with, just like the wild garlic, you can make a spicy type of pesto with that, um, using this in replacement of the basil leaves. So that is Detanda or peppergrass. So does anyone want to share anything about this lovely plant? No? Mark? It's, it's actually not so much sharing because actually that's, this is quite a new one to me. So I'm really grateful you brought it. I'm aware of it, but I've not experienced it. So I'm really grateful you brought it, um, talked about it today, Juliet. Um, I just think about the seeds because I think I, there's something about the seeds you could, uh, the seeds you could, I imagine they're really super hot and spicy and peppery as well. So that could be something incorporated again. We'll see what can use for the seeds, you know, when there's abundance of them. It's not just about, um, you know you can eat them but also obviously there'd be so much um self-seeding that they'll they'll pop up everywhere and as you say because it's so prolific you know you can harvest abundance of the seed so i'm just curious about the seeds as well i don't know a lot about the seeds i mean i've been growing it for years in my garden and it's it gets this white flower and then the seeds are quite small so they're not huge but they do the flowers are quite tiny as well on them um but i will look at the seeds this year and I will see if I can harvest some of them because you might be able to make a nice pepper, like your own pepper from it. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what I'm seeing. Again, again, it's that exploration as well. Of like, okay, this could be incorporated yeah. into other other plants and, and mixes. So, you know, there's there is a lot of plants that are very peppery um, and mustardy out there. In fact, it's quite abundance of them actually. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I'd love to um, explore that. Thank you for sharing. No worries, Joe. Did you want to share? Just to add um, about it being a brassica or cabbage family plant, that's where a lot of the mustardy ones are. And it's, um, um, I don't have that plant here, uh, but we do have horseradish, which is similar, and the uh, lady smock, which is just, I noticed, start popping up, uh, which is, a, I, I call it local wasabi. So mm. it's got that quality um, that you were talking about. Um, so I think the brassicas are really interesting uh, one to eat. Uh, it's so nutritious as well, isn't it? 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, the brassicas are all very anti-cancerous as well. They have a great ability to clear the body and protect it. Mm. Does anyone else want to share anything on this lovely plant? Um, I personally haven't really actually come across it down in Cornwall, so it's one another one for me to start looking at for and uh, give it a try and see if I can introduce it. So that's the nice thing about these sorts of uh, get-togethers. Um, we're all actually learning uh, from each yeah. other and sharing. Um, so it's really, really great and important because otherwise we'll all be quite isolated and uh, just in our own little worlds doing our own little things. So yeah, thanks, Julia. It's just really interesting yeah, and inspirational. Pleasure. And it's, I think it, what's lovely is the coming together of the different plants. There are so many plants out there that we can all access and we don't all know all of them. And we, we may know about a plant, but we've got our limited knowledge. And so what's lovely is the sharing so we can all expand our repertoire in our knowledge of what each plant does, um, which I think is really exciting. The sharing and growing of knowledge. Can I just add something to that? Um, I noticed that we've all got plants from different families, which I think is interesting. So I think that um, your family is the Brassica family. John had uh, the Ramsons from the Allium family and Mark had Alexander's from uh, APA sheet uh, or carrot family. Um, mine was from, I think it's Ruby Aishi. So not so common for foraging, but those other three families are really good ones. There's loads of edibles that we can find everywhere in those, the Alliums, the carrot family and the brassica family. So they're really good families to know. And there's a lot of, once we recognize one, there's characteristics in all of them. Um, but maybe that's for another time. <laughs> it's good. good. It is brilliant. And I think one of the things um, that is great is if anyone watching has their favorite ones that they'd like to tell us about, do type in the comments and share with us. And if you are watching, please do like and subscribe to the Vegan Organic Network so we can grow the audience and share this show with people. If you think you know anyone who might enjoy this, please do share it with them so that they can enjoy this and we can spread the lovely knowledge more and more. So thank you guys for all joining us. It's been really lovely uh, to be with you all this evening. And thank you all for watching wherever you are in the world. And we look forward to being with you again very, very soon. Uh, we will announce the next date uh, ASAP. So keep your eye on this channel. And uh, thank you again. Thank you to the wonderful team, to John, to Mark, to Joe, for your wonderful knowledge and your deep wisdom of the natural world. And thanks to you, Juliet and Dan. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Vegan Organic you, Network, for all you Thank do. You. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you.